Zarif Halaby on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. Hey, welcome back to the show. Total Financial Solutions, Safer Money Hour. Eric Halaby and Jeff Gerard talking about some retirement options and some things. Look, I know some of it is a wake-up call, right? Some of it is a, oh, I'm shocked and surprised and I was told and promised. I love it when people say, oh, that, that can't be, Eric, because the union promised me. Or you don't understand, that's a contract with the state of California. Caltrans, I, I work for Caltrans, they, they promised it. I'm like, look, that's nice. All of those are organizations that are wonderful. I work for the prisons, that's nice. All of that is great. I'm not saying that, that they're going to default on everything. That's not the point. The point is there's only a couple of ways to make some of these pensions and these, these w- things work. It is either to inflate the currency so in other words, yeah, we'll give you $1,000 a month, but it just doesn't buy $1,000 worth of stuff. It buys $800 worth of stuff. Uh, so they're going to inflate the currency and or they're going to uh, cap your percentage rate of return, meaning, or, or cost of living, meaning uh, most pensions today are capped at 3%. And they have this little uh, banking system. You know, if inflation is using the CPI of L.A. County of two, you know, one point, I love it. The other day, they're like 1.9%. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> Do you really think prices went up 1.9? I'm not buying T-shirts at Walmart or Target made in China for $6. That's not what I'm buying. I'm buying food. I'm paying my electric bill. And more people are getting solar. What do you think that does to your electric rates? Do you really think it keeps it low? It is just the opposite, my friend. If less of you are paying, then the ones that are are going to be paying more. I, I, I get the whole formula, but mm, sorry, math doesn't work that way. And listen to certain state politicians that say the more people that are using electric vehicles, the less likely it is that gas tax is going to be sufficient to pay for all the stuff that the state has stolen from the gas tax uh, fund. I mean, you realize that when you, when you go to the gas pump, it's almost a dollar of that price is state and federal tax. Do, uh, do, do you understand that? The reason that when you go across the border to Arizona, you see nearly a dollar reduction is because you don't have all the California state tax. And we don't use that to pay for our highway patrol and our Caltrans and road re- improvements. We use it for all sorts of other of the politicians' uh, uh, games. So these dollars, when less people are filling up at the pump every single day, right, one car, two cars, soon there are fewer people paying into the gas tax. Where do you think that money will come from? And then when the state says, "Uh uh-oh, we have to put in money for the state pension system XYZ, do you understand it's the pie is, if I take a bite of this side of the pie, it affects your pie because you're eating from the other side. So I want you to start setting aside dollars every single month. And how you're going to do that is every time you receive a pay raise, I want half of it to go into your bank account. That's fine. Save it. Goes into your checking your savings for emergencies. And the other half increases your retirement contribution. If you do that every single year, and your spouse, if, you, if your spouse works too, the opportunity of having that number grow exponentially over time is huge. And it's a big deal because this develops a pattern of increasing your savings because if you're hoping to have, you know, overtime or bonuses or pay raises and you already know that half of that you're not going to live on but you're going to bank that, that's an incredible thing. It's going to boost your savings uh, by by exponential numbers, like Arif's saying. The other thing we want you to, and we encourage people to do, is to look at something, and it's kind of in the same vein, but it's called automatic escalation. And what we mean by that is every year, if you have, uh, let's say, a retirement plan at work or a certain percentage of your income that you put into individual retirement accounts, increase that by 1%. So let, what do I mean by that? Let's say right now you're saving 3% of your earnings and putting that into your company retirement plan. Okay. Next year, in the calendar year, that's a, generally a good time to take a look at your withholdings. You're looking at your tax returns and everything like that. It's kind of in that same vein. Go to your HR director and say, hey, I want to increase my, uh, my contributions by 1%. So now you go from 3% of your pay to 4% of your pay. Now you might say, well, I can't really afford that. But if you made more money, 
you're generally paying a little bit more in taxes. So if you defer that into your savings, you just reduce that. So check with your CPA, your tax advisor, uh, your human resources folks. But seriously, this is this is a really uh, a no brainer way, in my opinion, to increase your savings, keep your tax liability kind of low and you're putting away for your future. And it's all done automatically. I mean, how can we how can we not take that? Yeah, you're going to see that uh, that the dollars that you get normally uh Normally, what you're doing in life is hopefully getting pay raises. That's a normal part of the process. Uh, Now, not always. Sometimes cost of living is nothing, 1% or 2%, especially if they buy into this silly 1.9% cost of living from L.A. County. Look, I'll tell you what. Go buy a gallon of gas. Today, it's low. I love it. It's much lower. But over the last six years, it's gone up nearly double or more, three times in some cases. But, you know, buy a gallon of gas, buy a, a gallon of milk. Uh, buy some cheese and some bread and, you know, the things that you're going to eat. Take a look at tires for your car, amortize that over a year and whatever, and put that all into a bucket and say, okay, here's my snapshot of what it costs for me to live for electricity, for, uh, you know, water bill and all that. And then see if a year from now that has gone up 1.9%. Chances are over time you're going to see it goes up. And here's the number, really. It's about 5 to 8 when we have spikes of inflation, which I think is coming because there's so much money in the system, as soon as the banks are loosening up, and we're already seeing it, uh, my opinion is they're going to loosen up these, the restrictions. And once they do, those dollars, flood, you're already seeing it, 3% down, 0% down, VA loans, FHA, and starting to you know, get money circulating again, it's going to drive down interest rates a little bit, maybe, but certainly, guys, you're going to see inflation spike. You're talking about gas and gallons of milk. I was thinking about this not too long ago. When I started driving, gas was about 99 cents a dollar a gallon. So that was a wow. while back. You're not that old. And I don't remember what milk was back then, but it wasn't, it wasn't cheap. Uh, now, you know, we're talking about a little bit of a lower environment for prices on gas. Milk has not dropped. I used to think, oh, when gas was four and five, almost five dollars a gallon, I was paying for a premium. Uh, four ninety nine. I remember going. Oh my gosh, how are we ever going to get out of this? And milk was what it was, about three something a gallon. And gas has dropped, has it not? But did the price of milk drop? Right. It hasn't. So do you think that they're going to pass those savings on to you? Oh, it doesn't cost us as much to get the milk to the stores anymore. I used to think those two were interconnected, but they're not. Maybe they are. I don't know. But then why hasn't the price of milk come down or anything else in that respect? And and I think you realize that. There is a cost to drive that milk to the plant. Uh, the machinery usually runs on electricity or coal. Y- you know, we have shut down. Uh, the, the facts of what the president have done, has done is made it so that coal plants nearly are impossible to work. In fact, he said he was going to do that. He said, we're going to bankrupt you if you are going to attempt to open up a coal plant. And incredible. He said the federal government would do that. That's like a weapon. How do you do that? So no coal, which means energy, which means cost of energy goes up. Instead of becoming a more productive place, we're restricting that. uh, And and when manufacturing facilities require electricity or gas or energy, uh, you're going to see costs increase. So I want you to, to begin saving through that. The second way I want you to begin saving when we come back is going to be involved debt. So I think you're going to be surprised. We'll cover that when we get back. In your place for news, talk, and information, I'm Eric Hallaby on AM 1220 KHTS. Welcome back to the show, Total Financial Solutions Safer Money Hour. Safe as in safe from fires. Safe from your money being blown up if the market drops. How do we make sure that happens? Well, certainly a fire extinguisher can help if you're worried about that. But, but when it comes to keeping your money safe from the market, you have to do a couple of things, in my opinion. Number one, um, only have what's in the market that you do not need for 10, 15, 20 years and that you can afford to lose half of it by the time you need it. Meaning we don't know if 10 years from now the market's going to be up or down. Okay, t- yeah, I had it in there for 10 years. Well, at the 10-year mark, we're in another recession, or the market has dropped, or another Enron, or who knows what. Really, because it's not about the market coming back. We've seen it go high. We've seen it go low. It's, it's right what Eric's saying. When do you need it? That's yeah. what matters, because the market could be on a high. You're like, yeah, you see that? I win. Really? But you're still working for another 10 or 15 years, and then when it goes down, 
I mean, we've seen it. People cannot retire. Yeah, it, it changes a lot uh, about what you, I think, what you want uh, in, in that safety part of the world. So, so here are some of the steps where if your retirement account is in the market, and that's a good thing, it's, if that's what you want, how do you take advantage of it? Number one, the, in my opinion, by putting money on that monthly contribution or, or every two weeks, you're buying when the market is low, you're buying when it's high, but it kind of spreads out the risk a little bit. It's called dollar cost averaging. Okay, you're spreading out that risk, you're reducing your, your, your overall cost often. That is a benefit to you when you are working. If you have old money, stray 401ks, if you will, those old retirement accounts, they go into the market and they are assessed a fee and then it goes up and you're charged a fee and then you lose money and you're charged a fee and it goes up and you charge the fee, meaning you're not taking advantage of the reason to have it in there, which is when the market is low, you're buying more shares. So in the old accounts that are sitting there in buckets, we might be able to help you with that. If, if you want some, some or all of that in a safer place, we might be able to help with that. Um, the... The part where you're going to contribute money is involving debt works like this. Once you pay off a car, usually, or a student loan, or another type of debt, if yes, let's say the payment is $400 a month. If yesterday you lived without that $400 because it went out to your, your car payment, and tomorrow the car is paid off and you still have that $400 a month, I don't want you to just, woohoo, we have $400 to spend. I want you to take that, put it into your retirement accounts. Now, maybe half in your retirement account and half in your checking or savings, right? Because I want emergency accounts to be six, seven, eight, ten 10 months, depending on your job, uh, of your expenses. And the way you do it is you kind of build it up slowly, but that $400 a month, if it was going out the door for debt, tomorrow it can now be part of your assets. And, and we're always so worried about, oh, what's my tax bracket going to be later on? What, what's it going to look like if I have to pull money out of my retirement accounts? How can I afford that? We think about that long term. Yet we carry long-term debt into retirement when we might have a fixed expense. So I love where Eric's going with this. You pay off a debt, you get that four hundred dollars freed up. Now that's you're free to do what you want with it. Pay off other debts maybe, and then build up a, a, a greater surplus or a greater padding there. But I love putting money into your retirement account and in your savings, not just paying down debt. Because you've heard me say this probably a long time ago: is the race to zero. We're all paid off on our debt side, but we have not built up anything on our savings side. Yeah, that's that's not good for you either in retirement. So so let's walk through this a little bit. Let's say you have a Honda. Your your great cars, they're going to probably last you more than three, four, five years. You know, right. they generally can last 10, 12 years. You might have a child at college at, at uh, whatever, let's just say Cal Lutheran or something. You now have a child at college, you're going to be paying off that school, you're going to be paying off the car. Once that's paid down to zero, the car's probably going to still run. Your child hopefully will finish college and about the same time the car's paid off. I want you to still keep spending that money, but you instead of sending it to the college or to the car payment, you're now going to put it in your savings account. And it might seem like you're on that little bit of a treadmill, but eventually you'll be paid off. And eventually that treadmill lets you get off and you have a bucket of dollars off to the side. So if you do need to buy a new car, fine, you do that. Or if your son now needs to go to college, fine, you can pay for that as well. But it's a process, right? That's right. But remember, if you're going to always incorporate that, let's say in, in our example, that 400 a month, you have to build that into your budget, not saying, oh, I'm going to have this car paid off, and then you retire, and all of a sudden you think, oh, it's, it's been three years since I've had a new car, and now I've got to go out and get another $400 payment. That's not good planning either. So if that's something you're used to paying, three, four hundred a month, and you've incorporated the cost of maintenance and insurance that goes along with that, if that's your total nut every month that you have to attack for your uh, new car or your newer car, then that's fine. That can be part of your budget, but you have to remember that that's not just going to go away if you want to keep buying new cars. Yeah. Look, I was guilty of that. I was that guy that always had a new car every three, four years, and partly because I drove 200, 250 miles a day, right? Wow. I mean, I mean, at one point, it was 90 miles one way just from my house to work, let alone any other errands or whatever else I used to do. So, so there was uh, thousands of miles, in some cases, a month being put on my car. So I had to buy a car was my justification, safety, and wah, wah, wah. So you may be in that position, but just kind of think ahead a little bit that a car is a tool. It's a, you want a safe one. You want a nice one that can, but that, that has air conditioning that can get you places. But when that debt is paid off, take a deep breath. Give yourself months to set aside those dollars so that you can have a bucket of money when time comes. Okay, Jeff, what about a credit card? Right? For a lot of people, they have credit card debt. They've been paying on it. When that's paid off, if you were used to making a $300 a month credit card payment and it was going to five places and then four and three and two, 
when that last credit card is receiving that $300 a month and you are now debt free, I want that 300 to do the same thing. That's right. Now, it doesn't mean go right out and go spend more money and go inquire new debt. This is that time to take a breather and realize that you have now freedom with 300 extra dollars. Now, if you're going to use debt as uh, or a credit card, for instance, as another way to spend the money that you already have coming in, that's fine. I'm saying don't carry the long-term debt where you're going to say, okay, I, I, I bought a you know, two or three thousand dollars worth of you know goods or whatever have you. You bought a TV and now you want to pay that off over time. Uh, that's a different way. But if you have a credit card that you're going to say, I like the points or the perks that come with it or the right. mileage, you swipe that card for your expenses that you've decided to do, to do ahead of time. That's part of your plan, and then you pay it off every month. There's no uh, interest accrued there, and it's just a different way, like I said, to spend your own money. And and that gives you that extra, I guess, that extra benefit of using those dollars later on. Keep your eye out. Every once in a while, uh, you know, one political party that decides to tax everything, they throw into one of the budgets, we're now going to tax perks, we're going to tax miles, we're going to tax uh, the, the benefits that you receive on your, on your uh, credit card charges, Incredible. so that could end up affecting you, uh, just be careful about that. All right, we're going to come back in just a minute as we get to the next part here. Uh, saving money, we use debt a little bit, we use pay raises a little bit, what are some of the next steps that you can use to kind of get a jump start? to make sure retirement is there and that you're in control of as much of it as possible. We have that and a lot more when we come back. That's Jeff Gerard. I'm Arif Halaby on your place for news talk information, AM 1220, KHTS. Hey, we're back. Total Financial Solutions, Safer Money Hour. I'm Jeff Gerard along with Arif Halaby talking about your family's finances, how you can get out of debt, manage your money, plan for retirement. We're giving you some strategies, some tips, just some things hopefully that'll help you boost your retirement and not count on whether it's the government or uh, something else out of your control to control and uh, support your retirement lifestyle. Some of the things we've seen are, uh, and I think these are more of the safer approaches. I mean, this is the safer money hour, right? I mean, we're not going to wait for that pay increase from Social Security. We want to do things that are on purpose and that build habits and good financial character for us. And I think one of those is not carrying long-term debt into retirement because those, those are monies we don't have to spend. You know, and think of it this way. A lot of you have gone uh, to, to great lengths to make sure your children get into college, to make sure that you're you know, you, you help your parents, whatever it is. Don't be afraid to get a second job. Mm. I, I know nobody wants to oh, I work so hard. You don't know how I feel at the end of the day. I get it all. Then just spend the money that you make and, and you're okay. Nobody says that you have to have two jobs. But what I'm saying is if you're going to spend money like you have two sources of income or three or four, depending on how many in your family, then if you're going to spend that money, then you have to earn it. You know, it might be to get out of debt. It might be to go and uh, save for your child's college or to pay back. You got a big student loan of 20000 I knew I shouldn't have signed for it, but I did. And my son said he wanted to and he was going to be uh, and we need to pay for it. OK, I get it. Then you have to have a second job or something. Otherwise, you're going to steal from the future, which means retirement or the day comes when you're ready to stop working for money. All of those things require dollars. I didn't make up the rules that Monday through Friday, nine to five, or, uh, you know, I love the government has made it so difficult for you to work overtime at your job uh, that in order to work a little overtime, we have to pay all of these things. Or look at the union world, right? It, sometimes they're wonderful for you and, and helps with your benefits. And, uh, and sometimes it's a pain in the tush. Look at some of the, the filming uh, things here in Santa Clarita. Oh, I need to move this cable. C hey, can you move that? It's in the way so people don't walk. We need an electrician. Hey, got a, hey, hey, come here. I need you to move this cable from here to there. Okay. Or, you know, I had a friend that worked on the sets when he, he got in such trouble, he got yelled at. You can't touch that thing. He goes, but I just moved it. It was six inches he moved. Well, you can't because you're, okay, sorry. So the more restrictive we put on your income, it's like walking down this little channel. L look, there are countries in the world that make it much more difficult. You know, Italy, in order to fire somebody, you have to go to court. And it's months, sometimes as much as six months. So if I want to fire, uh, if Kyle works for me, and I would fire him if he worked for me. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right, Kyle. If Kyle worked for me and I'd say, okay, oh, you're Kyle, you're fired. He goes home. I am still paying him. And meanwhile, he can work under the table, and that's what people do. They have the, it's called a black market economy, right? So they work under the table at different places for cash, and I'm still paying them until our court date. 
Then what I do is I present my side of the case. Look, ma'am, uh, Your Honor Judge, uh, he never shows up for work or he shows up late or he's always sloppy. Uh, you know, his work is... L I would just go on about Kyle. And I would have a whole list of things. And then on his side, he would even have an attorney that says, no, no, Your Honor, look, he showed up on time each and every time and look at the work he did. And a judge, a judge decides whether or not I can fire him as the owner. And if the answer is no, I got to take him back. Well, I don't really like, we're going to have a great relationship after that. So do you see how wacky some of Europe is? <clears throat> and people, oh, we should be like Europe. No, no. We should say, look, if you want to work for me, you can work for me. But if you can quit with no notice, then I should be able to fire you with no notice, says the business owner. If you can walk in and say, I'm out of here, then why shouldn't an employer? But we have all these rules and we have this, eh, da, da, da. okay, fine. So just know that it's not as bad as the rest of the world, and that's why some of the rest of the world is in a lot of trouble. But you could be in a position to where you work a second job legally and, all, of course, all of that, and those dollars go to fund it. I can remember years ago, I, I was stuck in a position where, where uh, times were tough. It was before we had kids. And my wife had worked for um, the Broadway department store. Do you remember mm, that? I do. And she was an account executive, a, a manager, actually. The, sorry, the assistant to the vice president of a big company. She had about 100 people that, uh, that uh, reported to her. And she was under, like 24 years old or something. Mm. Great job. But we needed extra cash. We'd gotten ourselves into a little bit of debt. And so that Christmas, she was working at the gift wrapping department that she used to work at when she was 16, 17 years old hmm. of the Broadway department store in Northridge. And she would work there, I can't remember, probably 5 or $7 an hour or something. And that is, and I had three jobs, so she had two and I had three. Wow. And that is how, and we saw each other very rarely. But unless hmm. it says, you know, in the Bible or the Constitution, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, weekends and holidays and Martin Luther King and President's Day off and all that, it doesn't make sense to me that we could arbitrarily come. And now, look, on how California laws, you have to pay sick time. Really? Okay. So do you think employers just magically come up with that money? Ah, oh, that greedy son of a gun. He's now going to be forced to give us. Really? So what do you think he would do with it or she would do with it? Do, do, you, do you really think an employer is like, oh, they got me? <laughs> or were they going to say, look, I have this many employees. You know what that cost me per year times the hourly rate times the amount of employees? <sighs> I'm going to take my company and go to Nevada. Uh, it's now too much money. I'm going to take... I, I was on a plane with the guy who moved his farm, a farm from the Central Valley down to Tijuana. He bought some land, hmm. and he has... It was tomatoes, I think. And he had a whole tomato farm. And we were flying back to, to Vegas, and he says, yeah, so I live in Las Vegas. My income is not subject to California, but I have a little place here in California. And because I manufacture, I'm, I'm subject to whatever wages are in, in Tijuana, and they want me there. I was like, whoa. It's the first time I heard of somebody running that direction. Yeah. <laughs> and what's that like down there? I mean, are the wages comparable? I mean, Not in even his, close. In his business? <clears throat> yeah. He pays people a little bit more, uh, maybe a lot, but certainly more than he, he, that they would earn in another job there but a lot less than he would pay here because here you have lawsuits, you have right. workers' comp, you certainly have OSHA rules that keep the employees safe. Sure. So there you're subject to the employer, hopefully having some integrity about his job and making mm -hmm. sure people wear, you know, the goggles and the hearing protection if they're working with machinery. And, sure. you know, you have to do some training, but, but maybe not everybody does. You minus mandates, regulation, state tax, all those other things. EPA, baloney, yeah. every time you Crazy. turn around, they're trying to save yeah, a no frog. It's people, people leave. Yeah, I, I can see that happening. If you take a look today, California is so broke that it is taxing everything. Instead of saying, we've got to find ways to reduce taxes and reduce taxes, it's going just the opposite. Because we have a one-party state, a one-party system in this state. Literally, all of the state offices are held by one party, and you're kind of stuck in this system where the rules are being made by one group it kind of acts almost like a dictator, right? Where they say, we're doing this and we're not doing that. You're like, yeah, but I have an idea. We're not interested. Next. So those kinds of things really impact. Your retirement, if you're not going to retire here in the state of California, means you don't have to pay income tax here in the state of California. So if you've accumulated 100, 200, 500,000, a million dollars or more, wherever you live, when you start to withdraw that money, 
is the place in which you file taxes. You've got to check with your CPA, tax preparer. We're not giving you tax advice, but realize that there are rules set up, and it's the reason that people will retire to another state or another country for that matter. And if it's a tax-free state, you still have federal taxes, but think of yourself getting an 8 9 or 10% pay increase by not having to pay California tax. That's a lot of money. You wouldn't deny a 10% pay raise. That's right. A lot of fun. Hey, folks, we're going to continue with that and a lot more. You can always get a hold of us at hometownstation.com. Click on Total Financial Solutions. Shoot us an email. Happy to talk to you about anything uh, that you have when it comes to your financial life. We can cover that for you, and we often answer questions here on the air. Thanks for listening. I'm Arif Halliday and Jeff Gerard. We'll be back after the top of the hour news on your place for news, talk, and information, AM 1220, KHTS.